Warning! One time I was sitting at a beach in, uh, I believe it was in Wichita, Kansas. We'd gone swimming. We were there at the river. It was a youth group event. There was lots of people around. And uh, I was playing in the sand as I sat on the beach and I felt a finger. And I jumped up. Oh, a finger, that doesn't sound good. And my girlfriend was sitting next to me. It was her finger. She had stuck it in the sand. I had freaked out. Warning, guys, there are false teachers ahead. Today, we're going to talk about false teachers. Things can seem to be going great, and we think things are awesome. And if you're on the beach somewhere, maybe down in Florida, and you're enjoying the beach, and the sun, and the waves, and the breeze, everything's purpose, uh, perfect, and then you see possibly a great big fin come swimming through the water. Or there's something crawling, nub, uh, gnawing on your toe, and it's got pinchers. Today I want you to know there are lots of, of things out in the world today that we just cannot see. And they can be a little bit confusing. i got some slides today. I want you to just notice some things that could be a little bit uh, confusing today. Pictures that can make things see different. Somebody painted on the rose this scene, on the road this scene. I understand Dysart, Iowa had some kind of a scene. Uh, it sure looks dangerous, doesn't it? And that kid hopping across there, uh, that's a pretty good job of painting. It's not as it seems. How about this one? Have you seen this picture? Lots of stairs going the wrong way and up and down and over and across and it can just be a little confusing to your mind. How about this one? Do you see a corner sticking out at you? Or do you see a corner way back? You know, it's a matter of perspective. Things can be a little confusing sometimes. You know, in the world we live in, some things take place that are hard for us to understand. How about a pandemic? Did it mess with you? You know, I find even today that I find great comfort in my office. And I didn't really know that, but then, uh, strange. There are people that have, find it hard to leave home because of all the stuff that's going on. How about other things that have taken place? Disease pops up, rearranges your life, rearranges your schedule, rearranges your checkbook, rearranges the activities that you've had. And it causes confusion, causes more work and more chaos. How about in culture? Have you gone to the store at Walmart and Cedar Falls and you don't know nothing is where it used to be? Have you guys had that problem? They moved the pharmacy and they've moved, I don't know, just anything. It takes you twice as long creating problems. Uh, as a child of the king, this is where we stand today. As a child of the king, a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have options. You can stand. Last week we talked about the grace and the mercy and the peace. As a child of the king, a disciple of Christ, you can stand in that grace and that mercy and peace. Or you can follow the world and you can cower in fear and confusion. It's the difference between confidence in where your next step in life is, or your uh, n not con or confusion. You can stand on self-assurance, or you can stand on self-defeat. You can stand in faith. Or you can stand in fear. You can stand in acting, doing the things you know this 
life calls from you, or you can stand in dear and doubting your next step. There are many warning signs on roads of life. I have a couple of pictures of just warning signs. The one on the right is the shed cemetery, and below it it says dead end. Or the one on the left says brakeless trucks use freeway. <laughs> That's a strange sign. How about the next one? Seldom seen road. <clears throat> or the next one, keep right. Which direction is the arrow? <laughs> you know, guys, we see roads, we see signs in life that don't make any sense. Adds to our confusion. Uh, over here by Quickstar, there's a sign. I don't know if it's still there. It used to say, no parking on parking. And I don't even know what that means. Confusion, the signs of the times, guys. The world in which we live can read, can lead to confusion. And to make matters worse, then get online and somebody tells you stuff. And it does not give any clarity. So we're confused. Jesus, years ago, gave us a warning sign as well. It's in the Bible. It's on false doctrine and false teachers. And it says, it's out of Matthew 24, 24, Jesus says, read this with me, for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. Jesus gives us a warning sign that says, there are those that will snag you and take you away. And they will even deceive the elect if that's possible. Today, I want to say, I believe there are false teachers. There are false beliefs. There are false doctrines. There are false leaders. There are false ideas. And we get online and they give no clarity. And yet, they also are leading us down a bad path. Guys, let me tell you, you need to be careful. You need to hear the warning of Jesus. Today, as we think about this passage, you need to know there are false teachers. Warning, guys, false teachers ahead. Surely you know not to believe everything you read online, right? Should I say that again? Surely you believe uh, that you realize you don't believe everything you read online. And surely you believe that you don't believe everything you hear from your friends. Guys, there are false teachers, there are false doctrines, and we must be careful because they will lead you astray. astray. And did you catch the part in this verse? Will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive. I asked uh, the other day, uh, several years ago, I was riding a bus to River's Edge with the kids in the bus. And I said, where are the vampires? And one of the kids in the back hollered, they are extinct. Tell me guys, are vampires extinct? They never existed, right? So don't believe everything you read or everything you hear. Have some smart about you, right? And so today we're going to talk about false teachers. Would you pray with me? And then we'll jump into this. Father in heaven, thank you for life. Thank you for the joy of salvation. Thank you, God, for the privilege of being in your service and the confidence we gain from knowing Father, that you love us and that you have put us here on purpose because we are able through your presence, Father, to reach the world in which we live. Guide us, Father, as we advance into the future today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Advancing begins with acknowledging who is in command. Last week, 
Advancing looks like placing your hope in Jesus. Advancing happens when you know your place in Christ, that you are a child of the King, and advancing begins with finding a sure footing in the gospel of Jesus and having that grace and that mercy and that peace that comes through knowing Christ. As we look at the first part of 1 Timothy chapter 1, the very next verse, listen to what Paul tells Timothy. As I urged you when I was in Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may begin a command certain men not to teach false doctrines any longer. So it begins with Paul leaving Timothy behind. Today I want us to look at advancing against false teachings. For us to think there are a multitude of false teachings that come through your TV and come on your phone and come through your friends and come through signs on the road and come through all kinds of things that are confusing to your minds. If you don't believe false teachings coming at you, then you're not being very aware. The first thing in advancing against false teaching is to call it false. In the passage today, look with me if you will, 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, first, uh, verses 3 to 7. Paul writes, As I urged you when I was in Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus, so that you may command certain men not to teach false doctrines any longer, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. These promote controversies rather than God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith, some have wandered away from these and turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they're talking about or what they so confidently affirm. There were false teachers that had come in. Paul said, they are perverters. They are perverting the law. They claim themselves to be experts in the law, but they don't even know what they're talking about. He also says that they are there's perversion going on with the law of God and that they are perverting it and making it wrong. They had added a grievous mixture of myths and fables and endless genealogies to the law. Endless genealogies. You know, the Jews stood very much on genealogies and they would say that I am of a direct descendant of somebody, 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 and they would take great strength in that and they would study wanting to know where they had come from. And because they had come from somebody, they were given extra special places, places of seating and special recognition because they were of the descendant of somebody. And they began to devote, uh, promote controversies and not work within the body. And they promoted meaningless talk. Guys, I believe there are areas of our world today where we need to be careful. Meaningless talk. Now, as a father, allow me to be a little old here today. I hear lots of meaningless talk sometimes. And not a lot of, commu uh, not a lot of communication. Not everything online is good for you. Not everything online should be taking up hours of your day. Not everything that you can get on the internet should be taking over your day and leaving God totally out of the picture. Notice it says they, promoted, they, they promote meaningless talk, not love from a pure heart, good conscience and sincere faith. They desire to be teachers of the law, but are ignorant and misleading in their beliefs. To call it false, you got to know the Bible. Paul points to the law and how the false teachers were mishandling it, claiming they knew stuff and they did not. A simple truth, the law is not made 
to control saved people. People that are following the law. The law is made for those to control those who are not following the law or the unsaved. Is the speed limit here out on Broadway for people that are following the law? It's for those that will break. And I hear them zooming by sometimes at midnight. You guys hear that? I hear it outside my, high, my bedroom window. Often because they are, they are not obeying the law. It's quite evident. Secondly, I want us to counter false teachers. To counter false teachers, you must, verse 3, as I urged you when I went to Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines. A couple simple parts in countering false teachers. You must stay. But it's easier to leave. I'm not having fun anymore, preacher. But to counteract false teaching, you must stay. Parents, how much of parenting is fun? Now, there's some fun stuff, and I love kids, and I think I love my kids through all the stages of their life. And that's awesome to see now in the midst of some crisis going on in our lives. It's awesome to see that their faith has become priority. That is cool. But all of the phases of their life have been a little challenging at certain times, and I thank God for a wife who could manage that well. Another way is you got to then speak up. Do you see Paul tells Timothy, command certain people. So why do you got to speak up? Because they're promoting controversy rather than advancing God's work. They're creating problems for you to sit. Uh, what's that saying? All that is necessary for evil to advance is for good people to do what? Nothing. To sit on a leadership team and say nothing does not advance anything. You know, Paul is telling Timothy, stay and speak up and discern what is false. You see, false doctrine claims strong scriptural background and careful study will show that there's no foundation there false teachers false doctrine will claim to have authority and exaggerate their importance and will look good it will appeal to non-believers uh, they will appeal often to non-biblical sources to strengthen their argument or to strengthen their position Jesus gives us a word of caution in Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 20. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every good tree, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. So how do you tell a false teacher? You look at their doctrine. How do you tell a false teacher? How about the effect on their students? How do you tell a false teacher? Uh, evidence in their own behavior. I learned a phrase several years ago. Confidence oftentimes can be mistaken for integrity. Just because somebody is loud and confident, seems to think they know what they're talking about, doesn't mean that they're good people. Right? Let's talk about the generations of people that have been changed because of Hitler. You ever watched videos of Hitler? 
You know, he's very confident. Have you noticed? He very much knew what he wanted to say, and he was evidently a leader of men, a leader of nations. And yet, was not his teaching false? Another thing to notice is that actions don't always show the true man. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13 to 15, read this with me. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. Do false teachers always look like false teachers? No. So then, how do you counteract that? What do you do with it? Well, let me tell you, Christian, be a serious student of God's Word. Open your Bible every day. And here's a couple of simple things that I've learned mixed with some some ideas online. Notice, to be a serious student, know the context of the passage that you're reading. Did you hear the story of the man that would just open his Bible every day and just he would just study and meditate on whatever he would just find to, to meditate on? That was just a happen chance of opening the Bible. And then he would put his finger on there and he would read that verse. So he opened his Bible one day and it had the passage about Judas hanging himself. And then he opened it up again, put his finger there, and it said, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. You know, you don't just open it up. You read, you open the Bible, know the context from which your reading. Notice why it was written. Notice what it was written about. Secondly, see from the view of the whole Bible. If it doesn't make sense in view of another passage, then it doesn't make sense with the Bible. Thirdly, look for repeated words or phrases. It's interesting how you can go through Corinthians chapter 13 and it will mention love often. Part of the context would be to know whom it was written and why it was written to them. Another part would be to know the author's background. Can you tell me about Paul, guys? Did you know that Paul's name was changed from? And did you know that Paul was a what of the church? He was a persecutor of the church. And then he met Jesus on the road to what? And he changed his life. And Saul's name was changed to Paul, and Paul wrote 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament. That's just almost half. Notice also, as you study your word, the Word of God, do a parallel study with many different translations. You can do that on some of the sites online or you can get different translations. I like to preach out of the NIV because it's simpler. This is the 1984 translation of the NIV. There is a more modern translation of NIV, which I'm not so fond of. They changed things. Also, you need to do your uh, look up the original Greek. On your phone, you can ask, tell me the word love in the Greek. And it'll pull up the different translation of the different meanings of that so that you can do an accurate study and understand the original language of the Bible. How about have commentaries from people that you know and trust? We're going to do a revelation study on Sunday mornings in Sunday school. The commentary that I will use is from James Strauss which I shook his hand. He was like me in many ways. He had no hair. And I knew him. He's gone now to be with Jesus. I can trust his commentary. He was a professor at Lincoln Christian College for years. Notice the conjunction, the 
the way the words are joined, like the word therefore, I had a professor that would say, whenever you see therefore, stop and see what it's there for. Or listen to because, or since, because pay attention to those things and then no more than one verse on any subject. So if, you want, if you're going to do a Bible study on something, notice all of the verses. So if you want to look up baptism, what does God think about baptism? Look up all of the verses on baptism, not just one that dismisses baptism. Then we do that in our world. Did you know that? Whenever you also want to defeat false teachers, a couple of verses that I found from the Bible, uh, some are from Jesus. On false teachers, First John, the gospel, the apostle John, false teachers are easy to spot. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is what? Not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which has heard, you have heard, is coming, and even now is already in the world. About this verse, they can be hard to see. We read some earlier. Such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. No wonder Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Notice the rest of it. It's not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. They can be easy to spot or they can be hard to spot. Notice 1 John chapter 2. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. 2 John 1, seven. I say this because many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh has gone out into the world as any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. 2 Peter chapter 2, 1-3 For there were all false prophets among the people just as there were, will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. The condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping about Matthew 7? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who deny the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will teach them plainly. I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. A couple more. Matthew 24, 24, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And then notice who is deceived. Paul wrote a letter to the church at Thessalonica. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. The last verse, read it with me. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. That's a lot of verses You realize I have now given you the information. There are 
false teachers in our midst. They can be your neighbor. They can be your friend. They can be your favorite website. They can even be your favorite TV show. My grandson told me about zombies. He's four. And something that eats them. And he's four. He was two and he went to daycare and he came back and talked about monsters. They're all around us, guys. Let me tell you, there are false teachers in your life. And if you don't build the force field of God's spirit and presence and his knowledge of right and wrong around you and around your family through devotions at the dinner table and teaching them and seeing that they are in good places where they can learn of God's ways, then there will be destruction. Because false teachers, catch this, false teachers can bloom if unaddressed and can lead to confusion and destruction. False teachers can happen in the church. Did you know that? If unaddressed, they can destroy. False teachers can grow and bloom in your life. And so the Word of God calls us back to believe and understand and see the false teachers in the church if we are to advance. Catch this church. If we are to advance, we must weed out the false teachers and be done away with them because there will be confusion on who to follow. And there will be confusion Self-determination and doubt in the world and false teachers can have an effect on us and pull us away. Satan is, or Jesus is everything and he demands we advance even though false teachers exist. But I have a problem, Tim. Uh, I have a problem, people. I can fall prey. I can fail against my human desires. Anybody else? I can stand in the, the checkout line at Walmart if I can find it and the Snickers will call to me. Now you realize the Snickers is just a parallel or an illustration for you to understand that part of my human nature that can be weak. And so today I want to challenge you, Christian. I want to challenge you to know there are false teachers, false beliefs in the world in which we live. You can't afford to go without the Word of God in your heart. What's the Christian pledge to the Christian flag? And it's also a psalm. I will not, uh, I will, I can't remember, just forget it because I can't remember it. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. Uh, I'm just going to quit. <laughs> I don't know it. It talks about putting the Word of God in your heart so that you will not sin against Him. Guys, you got to have the Bible. And how many people here own more than one Bible? More than two Bibles? More than three? More than four? When my father died... He had enough Bibles to give a Bible to his entire family. That doesn't make him a Bible guru. That just means he had lots of Bibles. Guys, the false teacher is there. Be in the Word of God. That is the only protection you can find. And so read the Word of God and make it a part of you. A couple of the false teachers in our society today, I believe that Gnosticism is sweeping our nation. Read up on it. I, I believe that one of the false teachers of our day would be materialism. The belief that if you have more, you win. You don't. Another one would be pride, selfishness, covetousness, I believe, is reigning in our world today and in churches where we want what somebody else has. How about legalism, arrogance, judgmentalism, anything 
that comes between you and God, guys, is a false teacher and will suck the soul right out of you and throw you to hell. Verse 9 and 10 says of this chapter, ungodly and sinful. They are unholy and irreligious for those who kill their fathers and mothers, for murderers, for adulterers and perverts, for slave traders and liars and perjurers and for whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. Did you catch the part in verse 5 of this chapter that says, the goal of this command that God has given us is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. And then I love this verse. The very next verse, we'll touch on it again next week. Paul writes, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considers me faithful, appointing me to his service. I don't believe you're here by accident. I don't believe you're here simply because two people got together and now they have children. I believe you're here because God sees that you are able to deal with the issues of this day and you are here on purpose. You are here because the kingdom of God has said you have the ability to deal with these issues today. Do you feel like God's dream team at River's Edge? False teachings are, adra- are advancing around our nation and God says, Tim can handle it. And God says, Dave and Sonia can handle it. And God says, Buzz can handle it. And God says, Barbie can handle it. And God says, all of these people here are the ones God places on the team because you can handle it. So, we get to the end. What false teacher are you wrestling with? And God pops up things in your life that will give you a chance to stretch out in your faith and dare to believe. God has thrown cancer in my life again. And he calls Tim to believe. Right? God can call financial problems into your life. God can cause, throw a movie or a belief or somebody in your life that gives you a chance to believe. Today, guys, will you stand up with the body of Christ at River's Edge and say, I will stand up against false teachers and I will read my Bible and I will pray faithfully and I will stand up and I will not leave. I will stay. And I will be loud and make sure the world knows Jesus is the answer to the problems today. You guys believe that? So stand with me. We're going to sing a song. Stand with me, will you? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you, it's not too late. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus and you haven't accepted Him, then I want to challenge you to be active in your faith and to believe. You know, we are a living water distributor and we have a baptistry. You can be baptized this morning. If you're here today and you don't know and you need to step up, then by all means we're here to assist you in that. So uh, pray with me, will you? Then we'll sing. Father in heaven, thank you for this thought. Open our eyes. Help us to see you. Set us free from the blindness of the God of this age, that we would see the love and the grace and the power that we have through Jesus' name. Guide us as we come to this close of this service, as we decide to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please come today if you have a decision to make for Jesus.